The Mobile County Public School System presents Home Room with Nancy Pierce. Hello and welcome to Home Room. I'm so glad you could join us. I'm Nancy Pierce. I'm the Public Relations Supervisor for the Mobile County Public School System. And I love to talk about the Environmental Study Center because it's one of my most favorite places to go and still too many people don't know about it so we want to educate those people that don't and joining me is Susan Clement she is a biologist at the Environmental Studies Center and she loves what she does and I love to have her on <laughs> it's so much fun I always enjoy coming out to Good. see you well um, what what do we have here <laughs> well this is Orion he is our peregrine falcon and he's actually one of our new birds that we're using in our educational program at the center. I love him. So he's this really is his cool. debut, I guess you could say. And he, look <laughs> at how, how good he is being. He, I better not say that. You know, <laughs> not what? Okay. Yeah. But um, what, tell me about a peregrine falcon. Where, so, where did it get its name? Well, you had to ask me that. Uh, sorry. I don't know. That's okay. I'm going to say I don't know. Right. But let me tell you a neat thing about the coolest thing about the peregrine falcon uh -huh. is that this is the fastest animal on earth really literally faster you know everybody hears about the cheetah right the cheetah is the fastest mammal this is the fastest animal on earth they can when they're diving because they dive for their food they're mm -hmm. flying through the air they're catching birds with their feet and when they get down to a dive they can easily get almost up to 200 miles an hour as they're making a dive to catch their food. He's kind of looking like, I can? Yes. I don't do that. <laughs> so he's, he's very streamlined in the mm -hmm. way he's built. His wings are very sharp and, and, and long so that he can really, he'll literally just put his wings together. He's streamlined like a jet and just dives wow. down. His feathers are very tight to his body to make him fly fast too. So fastest animal on earth. That's kind of cool. 200 miles an hour. Yeah, very, very oh fast. Oh my gosh. How old is he, do you think? You know, we're not sure. He came to us as an adult. Mm -hmm. So, you know, they, they live 30 years, so we know he's over a year old. Right. But other than that, we don't really know. He came to us, he'd been hit by a car, uh -huh. had a damaged wing. And of course, with the peregrine, they have to be able to fly 100% sure. to catch those birds and to fly fast. So he is not able to fly well enough. To, to go back to the wild. Will he ever? Will his wing ever be no, good no. enough? No, it, it was damaged. just it was it was damaged mm -hmm. in the joint, so mm -hmm. he can fly, but not well enough to right. to catch food. And he's a bird eater. A falcons eat birds. They fly fast. You know, when to you catch said that birds. about how fast he flies to yeah. catch birds, I thought, did she mean did she mean fish? <laughs> <laughs> he eats birds. He eats what, birds. What? A little bird? Just, yeah, you know, sparrows, uh, pigeons. I mean, they eat a lot of pigeons. It's amazing. Huh. So this is a, a this is a bird, you, you don't realize it, but you'll find them living in cities. Because think of cities. Big cities have pigeons. You bet. And so the peregrine has actually adapted really well to living in cities, nesting on windowsills outside of your big, you know, tall sure. high rises, and catching the pigeons that live there. So wow. good bird to have around. Huh. <laughs> how, how, how much does he weigh? He is a little over a pound. So he's a solid bird. Now it doesn't sound like much, but he's a very solid bird. Birds can't be real heavy oh, because they, of yeah, their flying. Sure. So they have hollow bones. So even though he looks big, those bones are hollow and that helps him stay light. I, I'm extremely impressed with him and yeah. the way he is behaving. He's, I know. But, I was. You know, I always get nervous. Sure. Well, no matter, anytime you bring an animal. Oh, you never know what they're going to do. Out in the public. Right. You, you don't know what they're going to do. And this literally is his debut. This is the first time he's been, even though we're not really out in the public, you know, just being under the lights, under the lights being TV, in the studio, oh boy. everything. I wasn't sure. But for being the fastest animal on earth, he's actually a very laid back bird, too. Huh. I mean, just... He loves just taking everything in, you know, looking around. So I think he's going to be a great addition to our, our Raptor Roadshow. Oh, I'm, I would love that. Let's talk a little bit about your Raptor yeah. Roadshow. Yeah. You've been going to schools with that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And is it just to, inter is it to introduce the kids to birds? Yeah. I, a lot of people, yeah. I think, go, oh, birds, birds, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But they're so interesting. You know, it's, birds are interesting because they have so many adaptations. Mm -hmm. You know, this is something we like to teach the kids about, kids about adaptations. So we go to the schools. We go to festivals you know our open house and so I mean you look I have a glove on so we've got the toenails that are sharp the yeah. feet that are strong so that's an adaptation mm -hmm. to catch those birds mm -hmm. his beak is hooked to tear up the food as he eats and each bird that we bring out during our Raptor Roadshow has 
you know, different adaptations that we can talk about. So, you know, it's, it's entertaining, but it's also really educational. Sure. And we want, we want the public and the students to appreciate these birds so that they take care of them in the wild. Right. So we don't, you know, clear cut the forest. So mm -hmm. we don't litter. So, you know, when you respect something, you tend to want to take care of something. Of course. So Is helps. he the only one at the Environmental Studies Center? The, the only, only peregrine. 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 Yeah. The peregrines, my, mer my, I'm, I'm. You're following mine. I know, I know. <laughs> they migrate here during the winter. Okay. So you only see them here in Mobile in the winter when they're heading south for the winter. Okay. And then actually you'll start to see them now in the spring when they're heading back up north. So. Now how will he be in the summertime? Will it be too really hot no, for because him? because even, you know, when, where, where he goes, it's, it's hot, mm -hmm. so he, he'll be fine. He adapts to that fine. How does he get along with the other birds? Well, he does, he's in his own cage. Is he? So he's not, you know, with other birds. He sees the other birds, you know, in the animal care room. He sees all kind of action and commotion. So he's, and that's what we want him to be used sure. to. Because we want him to be relaxed out in the public. We don't want him stressed and, and nervous. And, I think he's demonstrating that. <laughs> I think he is demonstrating he's demonstrating that very well. <laughs> oh, really? Yeah. Oh yeah. He's beautiful. He has but beautiful yeah, so feathers. And he'll he'll be a great addition to our Raptor Roadshow, mm -hmm. and of course our Raptor Roadshow is going to be happening at our open house. Too. And we're going to talk much more about that yeah. in the next segment. Yeah. Um, the Raptor. Ro how long have you been doing that? It's it not has been. What about two and a half that, years? That's what now? I thought. I didn't think it'd been. Yeah, because uh, we than actually that. started at. Our, at Delta Woods and Waters Festival, which mm -hmm. is at Five Rivers, actually April 26th. Mm -hmm. And this will be our third one coming okay. up. And that was our very first one three years ago, is when we started the Rafter Roadshow. And now, you know, it's amazing what we've grown into in three years in terms of the birds that we've acquired mm -hmm. and the people that we've trained and just the knowledge that we've gained learning about each bird as we get it, too. So. It's been really good. And what's the other neat thing about the Raptor Roadshow is we use it as a fundraiser for our wildlife rehabilitation program. So when we do these Raptor Roadshows, we, we charge. It does, mm -hmm. you know, it's not free. Now, of course, at Open House it is, mm -hmm. but we do charge, and every penny that we make at the Raptor Roadshow goes directly back to our wildlife rehab program. And of course, every bird that is in our Raptor Roadshow initially came through our wildlife rehab right. program. And these are birds that can no longer go back to the mm -hmm. wild, so now they're giving back to help out with the, with the, the rehab program. I love it. We're going to talk yeah. much more, and yes. Desi Bishop will be here, yes. and um, we'll go back to, uh, oh, you're going to bring another beautiful oh, creature yeah. out. The so, big surprise. So you stay put, and you tune you. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> and we'll be right back. Listen now, can you hear the bluebirds? Oh, look up now, can you feel the sun? Oh, 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 can you feel the sun? The next 30 seconds can save you a lot of money. Just do your laundry in cold and stick to full loads. Auto sleep your computers. Plug your gadgets in a power strip and switch it off when you're done. Head it out, turn back your thermostat by 10 degrees. And drive sensibly. The more energy you save, the more money you save. Find other great tips at energysaver.gov. Well, welcome back to Home Room. I'm Nancy Pierce, Public Relations Supervisor for the Mobile County Public School System. And we're talking about nothing but the Environmental Studies Center, which is fine with me. Except I'm a little upset with you, Desi. I know. Desiree Bishop, the director for the Environmental Studies Center. She did not bring my favorite yes. 
creature from the um, center, which is a corn snake. I know, you love the corn snake. I love her, or him, whichever, but it's okay. Because you're going to talk about wonderful things coming up. We've got great things happening at I the know. center. I know. This We're is excited. a great time of the year. It is. It's a beautiful time of the year. The center is, everything's greening up, mm -hmm. blooming out, leafing out. The grounds look fabulous. Of course, it's also baby animal season. Lots of animals are coming in. Sure. So we're all, we're all excited and ready to go. I love so. it. Well, it's perfect timing because of the open house. All right. One in the fall in November mm -hmm. and then one in the spring in May. In May. All of a sudden I got confused. And it seems like lately, I, I sh and I don't believe in, you know, if I say this, I, I might be jinxing it. We've had great weather. We have had great weather. Sunny and days. We're hoping and for more great yeah. weather. But, you know, our crowds are getting bigger and bigger. Know. You know, people have, you know, started to hear about us, which is amazing mm -hmm. because, you know, the center's been there since 1978. Gosh. And there are still people that never knew that we were there. So, uh, you know, where and, the words And still out. don't. And that's why we mm -hmm. have to keep telling them. I, I'm trying to think when I first learned about this Environmental Studies Center, and I can't remember if I was working here or not, but I was amazed. And then when I find out mm -hmm. people don't know, and it's mm -hmm. right here, and these are people that are right here, I think, you must go here. You I must know. visit. But, okay, let's talk about Open House. Well, Open House is May the 2nd, and it's from 10 to 3. It's an hour longer in the spring than mm -hmm. it is in the fall. And, you know, it's a beautiful day. It's a day where we do all our programming that we can, the, the bird show, the reptile show. We do animal talks. We have all the environmental Excuse me, vendors. animal talks? Not We're the animals talking, but <laughs> we talk about the animals. We do have some animals that do talk. Yeah, shadow, so I know we yes. do have a couple of ambassadors that will greet you when you walk up oh, on the definitely. porch there. So it's a great day. It's become a big event for us. In How fact, many people did you have last year, last, you know, last spring? It, some, it can be anywhere from 500 to 800 people. Do you usually have a better showing uh, more people there in the spring or fall? In the spring, in the spring. it's usually, you know, because, because it's free. Right. It's a oh. great family event. Mm -hmm. It's a great educational event mm -hmm. there. And because we've grown so much, now we have a bus shuttle from Burns Middle School. You park at Burns. Which is right next door. Right next door. And then you just take the shuttle. It runs continuously. So you never have to wait more than 15 or 20 minutes mm -hmm. to catch the shuttle. You know, if you're handicapped or something, we do have spaces for handicapped mm -hmm. around the building. But it's a wonderful day. You go out there. We had the uh, vendors, our partners in Ed, the Audubon Society, Dauphin Island Sea Lab. They all have a table because we all have the same mission. Right. We, we want to educate the public and make them good stewards of mm -hmm. the environment and the special place that we live. Because Mobile Bay is in the Mobile area is just a very unique Everyone across the country, all the environmentalists know how special Mobile is to all the animal and diversity of wildlife we have. Our waters are teeming with life. They are. And, and our woods are teeming see. with life, right. too. So, I know. So we have to take care of everything. We, have we to do. speak for the trees and all the animals that can't speak. You know, we have to make sure that we take care of them. And it's a, a major fundraiser. You know, mm -hmm. we raise money for our wildlife rehab because, you know, uh, you know, they don't take any money, you know, we don't use any public funds mm -hmm. that are given to us for education. Mm -hmm. But, you know, Susan Clement, our wildlife biologist, does a great job. She helps and her volunteers help with Open House and my staff help. Everybody works together. We're small but very tight-knit staff mm -hmm. out there. And then we have other fundraisers, the Rabies Clinic, May 30th at Griggs Elementary. It's and you've been doing that? A few years now. Yes, a few years, and it's great because uh, all the vets volunteer their time. The the vaccine is donated, uh, so all the proceeds go back to animal care, and plus it prevents rabies mm -hmm. in the community. And it's a drive through. You don't uh -huh. even have to take your animal Perfect. out of the car. Our vets go, the vets go up to the car. Mm -hmm. They, you know, roll down the window, open the door, so you don't have to worry about. You can bring as many dogs. You know, the hunters will bring. Their trailer full of hunting dogs. And, oh my you know, gosh! It's a hard day for the staff that works there, but they do a great job. But they job. do a great job, sure. They do a great job. Let's get back to if it, you park and you're going to ride the shuttle, and then you decide, no, I think I'll walk. There's a path. Is that still there? 
Well, no. they, we did the path, but you know, they're doing construction on Burns. Oh, okay. They're doing the okay. new wing on Burns, so the path has been blocked off because okay. they're doing construction. There. So you'll need Usually, to take the shuttle, which you know, is fine. So you could take the shuttle mm -hmm. there. So, mm -hmm. uh, um, yeah, we, yeah, we do utilize our path, and once they get their new beautiful science wing, we'll use that path again So at our next open house. So I, the open houses are great. And it's wonderful. Because the study center, the um, Environmental Study Center is not open during the weekend, right. except during our open houses, because right. it's part of the school system, and we are not, our schools aren't open during the weekend. This is the one opportunity that everybody can show up. And, you and show up. It. You know, we're open to the public during the week, Monday through Friday. Right. But you don't get to see the shows mm -hmm. and, you know, and if you come with small children, we have programming going on because during the school year, we have groups, two or three groups every day. We see and educate over 10,000 students in Mobile County a year, which is incredible for a staff of three resource mm -hmm. teachers and a biologist. But we always have, you know, we do really uh, programs that are aligned to the curriculum. We do STEM activities, water quality, you know, we promote those science fields that involve the environment. So, uh, you know, during the school year, we're pretty busy. Mm -hmm. But, you know, come, you know, anytime you can. In the summer, we're open all summer. We do run summer camps. And you can see our summer camp brochure online. We've sort of adjusted. We've changed things around. Oh, yeah. We've added some new camps. Oh, they are, so, you ought to go online just to look at it. Even if you don't have a child to go to I camp, know. I want to go to camp. And it's a very I'm colorful thrilled. brochure, too. So it's like, it's fun. You know, there'll be, sure. there'll be things along the lake that we're going to do. You know, there's art and nature that we're going to do. Incredible. So there's just... This is just a lot of things going on, and we want kids to get outside during the summer. Definitely. Don't get leave away your from kids inside sitting in front of the computer exactly. or looking down at their tablet. We want you outside, but you can also use those things outside. You know, we have a mobile app that you could use, so, you know, you can take pictures. You know, we, we invite you to come out and enjoy the grounds and learn something. And you will learn something. Definitely. Even if you don't want to. But you will and something. probably several things. And several things. Yeah. Right. Now, what about during the open house? You used to have, and I think, I know it was in November. Do you still have the Star Lab up? We do have the Star Lab program. We try to do all, that's a bird. Yeah. Birds Scared me. Tend to flap like that, so, <laughs> but you'll be excited when you see this bird. I know, so you I can't know, wait. It's, it's worth it. But we do all our all our regular probing. We do the Star Lab, and that's we where people go in this show. this yep thing that. It's a planetarium. Planetarium so, is so cool. I've and, never been in there for. Well, I I get a little claustrophobic, oh, and yeah. so many people want to see it during open house. It is a crowd that goes in. Yeah, there, and they so. love it, and it I shows the it. different star. Oh. Yes, Anita Salinas is our star lab, uh -huh. our, our really our star person, astronomy person, and she will show them what will be in the night sky that night, mm. what will be overhead. You know, she can take that star lab and show you the day you were born. She can do, you know, the Native American legends or the Greek, wow. you know, mythology about the sky, so, or the moon phases. So it's a great program, but we'll do also our reptile show, our rapture show. What kind of reptiles know. are we talking here? Well, we'll talk about, we don't take out our venomous, but we do have oh, okay. the venomous snakes in the classroom, but we'll take out your favorite, and we'll talk about the turtles, which are my favorite. <gasps> oh, they're wonderful, yes, yeah. And the alligator, we'll talk about all the native things, and that's what we do. We only do native to Alabama. Well, that's good. We don't good. do exotics or domestics or, you know, and our wildlife program only takes in uh, animals that are hurt you know, we don't raise babies unless we know for sure the mother is no longer, no longer there. there. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, the best person to raise a baby wild animal is its mother. Sure. So we always try to put that back. And, you know, we only take care of the injured. And we take care of about a 1,000 wow. injured animals a year. So, uh, That's you know. amazing. And there's no other place to take them. No. So. What do you do? So, you know, we have to. Well, I'll call, well, I'll call and say, what do I do? There's a baby bird in it. Well, you need to pick her up and put her someplace in a tree right. where, she, you know, her mom can mm -hmm. find her again and 
of course, then if I go back and she's gone, I'm kind of sad. But then on the other hand, yeah, I'm happy. That's the best, because that's the best thing I for know, them, though. I that's know. how, you know, this is the time of year you get a lot of baby birds on the ground. Well, they're supposed to be on the ground. You know, they, you don't have to bring them to us. The mother and father are feeding them on the ground. They're trying to get their wing muscles strong. Right. You know, they'll hide there. So, you know, and, you know, unless you know for sure the mother or the parents aren't there. You know, leave those babies. In a Boy, while. and you'll know if they are because they make a lot of noise if they you do. <laughs> if you get they near do. their babies. Yep, and all that baby has to do is call, and those parents That's, are there. It is, so. it is truly amazing. Well, I know. You know, also, we, I love to talk food too because there's a lot of food oh, yes. at the open house. Yes, we have. We have our grillers, our <laughs> master grillers master there. Grillers. So that's what we we like to say. And, we have hamburgers and hot dogs and the regular fare, popcorn, but we also do a bake sale. Yes. You, know, you don't see many bake sales, but our volunteers right. and the staff, you know, we bake cakes and banana bread and brownies and whatever, and all that goes to animal care and anything. Wonderful. Sometimes the Audubon Society, those ladies will sell plants mm -hmm. and they give us all their proceeds from their plants. There's things for kids to do. It's because you're painting. so cool. You know what? we're. I, we're, we have to take another break. So you stay there, and we're going to bring Welcome also bring Susan center. back. So you stay put. We have another bird to show you. And we're out. You got plans? You bet. Fifty million Americans struggle with hunger, but we can do something about it. Excuse me. What's going on? Dinner. Please join me in helping put food on their tables. Together, we can feed America. You guys keep going. I'm going to get the plates. Plates? Find your local food bank at feedingamerica.org slash hunger. So, I just moved in with this family, and it's embarrassing. The little one, he likes to go outside and crawl around in the giant litter box. I don't know what he's doing. I mean, I was born, and I knew how to use the litter box. Look at that. That's disgusting. Oh, poop already. You're making me nervous. Oh, okay, I can't look at this anymore. I really hope he grows out of this, for his sake. <laughs> Mom, can we get some ice cream? Please, Mom, please. No, we're having dinner yeah. soon. Please. You don't have to be perfect to be a perfect parent. There are thousands of children in foster care who will take you just as you are. And we are back with more Environmental Studies Center and open house talk and wonderful animals. And we have an incredible one right next to us with Susan Clement, the biologist from the center. Take a look, <laughs> take a look at this <laughs> wonderful bird. This is Luco, Luco. our bald eagle. And I decided to try him out on a perch instead of my arm because he's a little more secure, feels better. We really don't want him flapping his wings right now with that six foot wingspan. No. But he is truly our newest addition wow. to the Raptor Roadshow. Where'd he come from? And he actually came from the Alabama 4-H Center at, up in Columbiana. Okay. And they are kind of changing things around. And the employee that had the eagle experience got a new job and left, and so they were right. not able to sure. keep them. And since we have an eagle permit, we happily said we could go we'll ahead and take, take them. Him. Because what's neat about Luca, you know, we have two other bald eagles, mm -hmm. but they are not trained to sit on the glove and to be on the jesses and to go out in the public. It's a lot of work sure. doing this training, but he is 16 now, and basically he has been trained his whole life. He's got a neat little history. Um, when he was about a week old, they, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife goes out and, te and looks at bald eagle nests and uh -huh. bans them at that time. This was down in Florida. And when they went to check his nest, he had a sibling. They banded his sibling. When they went to band him, you can't really see on the screen you can because he's facing the other way. Right. But his beak comes out to the side. You can kind of see it. You can oh, see, see how it curves over. There it is. You can see how it's not aligned. And that's how it was as a baby. So huh. we're not sure if he had had damage when right. he first hatched out or if it was he was born that way. But as I said earlier with the peregrine, 
they use their beak to tear up their food. Right. And with his beak being crooked like that, uh -huh. he cannot tear up his food. He can't? So literally from baby to now, we have to give him small chunks that he can pick up. So of course, he's not going to survive out in the wild right. because of that deformed beak. So at a week old, you're good. At a week old, he was <laughs> he was taking roof work roof going work. on and <laughs> right like, now all the times, but we're good. He's doing really good. So literally for 16 years now, I mean, he was taken as a baby. So he's been with people for most of his life. Sure, he's used to being around people. They started working him on the glove, you know, as a baby. He's also been at um, Callaway Gardens. He was oh. at their Raptor Roadshow. Mm -hmm. And he started off down at the Audubon Center down in Orlando. So he's been literally, our, we're the fourth place that he's been to. He has his moments. I mean, he, he has Don't an attitude. We all? That's a bald eagle for you. We all but do again, that. We, ha we have to trim his beak monthly. We use a Dremel drill because, again, bird beaks, when they're normal, they grind, right. which, of course, grinds them down. Yeah, his but since it goes to the uh -huh. side, it doesn't naturally grind down. And, and also when they're tearing their food, that grinds mm -hmm. the beak down. And since he doesn't do that. Does he like to look down or is that? I, I'm not sure. I think he's just taking, taking everything, everything in, in right now. I'm not sure what he's really looking at down so there. So he has, he's never but been as under long the bright as he's camera lights. I know. I'm, I'm happy. We're just going to get him, let him do what he wants to do. How big is his wingspan? He's about six feet across. Wow. That's and he's taller actually, than I am. he's actually small. Boys are smaller than the girls. Huh. And he's about six pounds and the girls can weigh up to 10 pounds. I'm very happy he's a boy. It's, yes. I, I always tell everybody, hold a five-pound bag of sugar sure. in your hand out like this for five minutes, mm -hmm. and you will die. Oh yeah. My my arm every time, even though, even though I've been handling them a lot, when I'm finished with them, my arm is just you know shivering, just shaking from from the strength. I mean, it's amazing how heavy he is, and when he flaps the wings. It's just amazing. Now, is he in a cage by himself? Or yes. Is he with he, the other ones? He does have his own personal cage that we just had built. What's amazing is we had a family donate money, and it literally was the amount that we needed to build wow, this cage. Wow, that's perfect. So we are, we're going to have it in their name. Mm -hmm. I cannot remember their name. That was the Tacon family. That's great. The, the parents had passed away uh -huh. and they donated this money in their memory. Wonderful. So yeah, so basically the cage will be named after that. But yeah, we just put him in his new cage about two weeks ago. And he so if you, if you come out at Open House, oh, do. you'll get to see him in his new cage and you'll get to see him in our Raptor Roadshow. He is going to be the the final event in our Raptor Roadshow. We're going to now gonna he would bite Rico. if I put my finger up yeah, there, right? Yeah, and and yeah, he he might. He, you know what's funny is they're not big biters, but those talons, I can attest, those talons can really hurt sure. you. Sure. And he's one. E bald eagles kind of become a one-person bird. bird. They yeah. get used to one person. Sure. They know you, and if they don't know you, he's going to let you know. And, oh. and so we don't we don't want to let we don't want him no. to let you know that he doesn't know you. So we're don't. just going to keep out of his little zone here, and, and he'll be good. Well, but you we, know, of course, this is America's national I symbol. Know, so I know. you know, this is just neat. They He's eat, very, they eat looks fish. Very strong. Very. Teeth. You know that those eyes are yeah. just piercing, piercing. You know, just they always, as we were saying, they almost look kind of grumpy all the time. They, he does. He the looks they a little look. grumpy. I kind of hate to say that. We got about thirty <laughs> seconds. So one other question. Yes. Um, are you going to release any birds? Right now, I do not have any potential okay. releases, but you never know. You never know. If we have a release, it will be at the end of our Raptor Roadshow down by the lake. Okay. So. And what's the know. date again of the opening? May 2nd. May 2nd. 10 until, until 3. 3. Park your car take at Burns the shuttle. and take a shuttle. Come it's hungry. A fabulous time. <laughs> fabulous. Thank you so much, and thank you for being such a good guy. And thank <laughs> you for watching and for listening.